What's up guys, welcome back to Man Cave Collectible Reviews, coming at you today with another figure review. Today we're gonna to take a look at a figure or figures that I've really, really been excited about. A lot of anticipation around these figures coming from Diamond Select Toys. We have Omni-Man and Invincible based on the Amazon TV show, Invincible. Now this was also based on a comic book run that actually occurred prior to the Amazon TV show. And it was one of my all time favorite comic book runs. A very, very enjoyable read if you've never read it. I highly suggest you check it out, but you also want to check out the Amazon show. It was very well done and certainly was a good port over from the comic book storyline. So they gave us some figures. Now I don't typically do two figures at one time unless they're boxed together, but in this case, I just felt like it was appropriate with these two. This is wave one. Wave one has Invincible and Omni-Man, as we've said. They have now announced wave two as well. Really, really excited about those. So we'll be on the lookout for those in the future. That does give me hope that they are going to continue this line and give us more characters from the Invincible story. Let's jump right into what we have here. So we've got fantastic box artwork here on this. I love the way they've done both of these boxes. They are done where they would look really, really nice hanging on a wall on a shelf together. We've got a nice big portrait of Omni-Man invincible here they do call these amazon original so i guess they're really basing the figures off the amazon show maybe from a licensing standpoint that's how they had to do it versus the comic book i, I don't really know how all that works but it does appear here they're really advertising more from an amazon standpoint diamond select here up top has a little bit of their own logoing as we spin around to the sides of these boxes, just additional artwork of each of our characters. And then as we jump around to the back, we do have identical back of boxes for these. And we got a little bit of write up on each one of these characters. Let's go ahead and crack these guys out of the packaging, see what we got. All right, guys, so we got our action figures here on the review table and out of their packaging. And we got a lot of things here to talk about. Let's go ahead and we'll start with the accessories first. So we'll start with the Omni-Man. So we got a pair of, I would think of these almost like angry hands. These are like grabbing somebody's face or grabbing a hold of somebody, but you get the point. We've got what you would typically call like flying hands or you could use them as karate chopping hands. Then a very cool addition here. We have a baseball throwing hand. This one does have the baseball inside. The baseball is connected. It's glued to that hand. And then you have a baseball glove here to catch the hand. So. The hand's actually inside the glove. You know, you just pop the whole glove on and that would give you your hand and everything there. And we have an additional head sculpt. This is more, this is kind of his angry face. You can see, uh, you know, straight out of packaging, you kind of have like the stoic face there, but we get kind of that more angry face here. Looking really good. And then lastly, we've got a stand here. So my guess is that this stand is actually going to be used for something that comes with Mark or Invincible. I'll show you that here in just a moment. This is not really big enough or, you know, hefty enough in order to really hold him up. It only comes up to about mid waist uh, or mid abdomen there. And uh, it doesn't appear that this is made for him. It would not obviously be a flight stand. It's way too short. So I'll show you what I think this one is used for. You guys can also correct me down in the comments if you have another idea uh, for this one. All right, so we're going to jump over to Invincible's accessories. So Invincible has a pair of kind of aggressive, or you could call these holding hands, angry hands, whatever you want to call them. He's got a pair of flying hands or chopping hands. Now he also gets a baseball, which is super small, and a glove as well. Now this baseball is not attached to anything, so you would be able to go ahead and drop it down into your glove, which you can see it, the glove doesn't necessarily hold it, but you know, you could pose it in a certain way that, you know, it would stay in the glove uh, from a posing standpoint. You also get this baseball. So this is a baseball that kind of gives off the effect that, you know, this baseball is traveling at a very high velocity. If you've seen the show or read the comic book, there's kind of a famous part of that where they are throwing a baseball practic pretty much around the world. They throw it it goes around the world and the other one catches it. So it's a pretty cool scene. Uh, so that's really what they're letting you play out here. But I thought this was a really cool accessory. Now, where this stand comes into play, in my opinion, I believe this stand that come with Omni-Man is to connect the baseball to. So you can see that there. You can connect that baseball to the stand uh, so that, you know, it can appear as though they're throwing it back and forth. Now, let me know if you guys have other ideas for it. Let me know. I'd be glad. I'd love to hear them down in the comments below, but that is my opinion on what this stand here is for. Mark also gets a angry face sculpt here, 
looks really nice. Very similar to the one that he, you know, comes out of packaging with, other than just the mouth. You can see there, he also has a very stoic look there. He gets a piece of rubble with some rebar coming out of it there. This is just a nice little chunk of plastic, kind of heavy. So this will look good just kind of sitting, you know, on the shelf where I pose them. I may just kind of, you know, have it sitting there with them, you know, something like that. I think that will look pretty neat. Now, Mark does get what I would consider a flight stand. This one is a little more hefty. And, uh, you know, it's, again, it's just going to peg into his back. He does have a peg hole in his back, which we'll show that when we get a little close up of him. But I think this one is much taller as you can see, this is actually taller than Invincible. And then the stand itself is, you know, larger in its diameter. So it's going to be able to hold and, and maintain the weight of the figure. All right, guys. So that is our accessories for these guys. Let's take just a quick close up of each one of them. We'll start here with Omni Man. Take a look at the figure there. You can see the, just the stoic face, real nice mustache painted on. The eyes look really, really nice. Painted blue there. The paint work itself is very well done. I, I see very crisp lines. Now, one thing I can say down here, as we see with so many action figure lines in this price point, the joints, I've got paint chipping out of the joint. So that is very much a NECA issue. We see that a ton with them. Now with Diamond Select, I don't review a whole lot of the Diamond figures. It's just not something I typically collect. Now this line I will, uh, but uh, that's that's disappointing. Uh, to see that here with diamond as well the cape a very hard very rigid plastic so it's it's not going to uh, give you a lot of movement but at the same time it's not very weighty so it, it doesn't feel like it's weighing him down or making him off balance when you go to try to stand him or pose him so that's very nice uh, but yeah i mean there's just not a whole lot to look at on these figures they are very simple and simple by design i think diamond select did a great job in you know nailing these figures and, and what they look like because this is exactly what they look like and when i say simple it's because the suits themselves are simple and that's how they designed them originally for the comic book we'll bring invincible in you'll notice sometimes i call him mark sometimes i call him invincible his real name is mark uh grayson uh, and better known as invincible uh, when he's in his costume here but uh, he looks really really nice the only thing i kind of i guess don't like about this figure is just the skin tone on the invincible figure here it is extremely light uh just too much you know you can see here if we pull in omni man you know that i mean this is his dad you know so uh, this to me is is more of a natural skin tone this you know is like the skin tone of a dead person so that would really be my only you know qualm i guess you could say with this figure otherwise it looks really good again lines painted really really nicely all the way around don't see re really qc issues on this guy at all um, again paint starting to chip uh, down here in the ankle areas so that's gonna that's going to chip off. But one thing that is good is the plastic underneath them. They did a pretty good job of finding a plastic that's fairly similar to the color that they've actually painted it. So while it's still a bit unsightly, it's not something that is going to just ruin the look of the figure like we do see sometimes with other companies. All right, so uh, let's look at articulation on these guys. Their articulation is identical on each one. So we're just going to take a look at Omni-Man here up close for articulation and you'll know that Invincibles is going to be the same. So we pull Omni-Man up here, we get his head down to about right there. Not very much up. Now that's disappointing because obviously these guys would be in flight poses a lot and you cannot get any farther than that. That's as far as it's going to go. You can get the full 360 there on that head, no problem. Side to side, no problem. Shoulder joints up to about right there with no issue. We do have a swivel in the bicep there. We can get all the way up and around, even with the cape there, no problem. Got a 90 degree elbow. Now, one thing I'm gonna go ahead and tell you before we go any further in this articulation overview, the articulation feels very dated. In fact, the entire sculpt feels very dated because of that. And you'll see that as we continue to move through this articulation. We got a little bit of crunch, not a whole lot. A little bit of side to side, not a whole lot. Down here in the leg area, we can get up to there. Can't get back at all because basically the, the plastic that forms the butt is gonna stop it from going back. We can get out all the way with that 
<laughs> weird articulation. You can see this. Look what this does when you articulate it. And, and I guess it's not the worst looking thing ever, but when you do that, you can see half his, you know, his thigh is gone. Yeah, you know, it's just, again, it's, it's a, an, a dated articulation. It's not something I'm used to seeing when dealing with like Marvel Legends, things like that. We got an upper thigh cut right there, single jointed knees, 90 degrees, and then ankle rocker and forward and back. So ankles are about the only thing that's kind of normal for what we see in something like a Marvel Legend. All right, guys, so I want to do just a little bit of size comparison here for you. I've got the 7-inch Mortal Kombat Storm collectible Scorpion here, and then we've got a 6-inch standard Marvel Legend. So you can see these guys very much are on that 7-inch scale. In fact, really, it almost even feels larger than that because Omni-Man is very tall. You can see he really, you know, he's a half-inch taller than even our 7-inch Storm collectible scale line. Now, Scorpion may not quite be seven inches. We can put a tape in here on them. So, Scorpion's slightly under seven, but Omni Man, every bit of, you know, almost seven and a quarter there. So, he is a large figure. You're right at about seven inches there with your Invincible figure. And then as we move on down, we're right at six inches there with our Marvel Legends Deadpool. So, Omni Man is a big guy, and he is rightfully so, even in the show in the comic book. So, that does make sense. It also gives me a good feeling for future releases in this line as the Invincible storyline has some characters that are very large. And we know Diamond Select does a very good job with making big characters. You can go look at their Marvel Select line and see things like Juggernaut, Abomination. They really nail those figures. So I think they will do very well with some of the larger characters in the Invincible line just because they're not afraid to make a big figure and charge a fair price for it as well. So that's something we got to look forward to in the future. So that's something we got to look forward to in the future for this line. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick overview and review of the Omni-Man and Invincible figure from Diamond Select Toys. Drop a comment down below, hit that like button for me. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday season. Until next time.